Hello, this is CD Arena. I heard Generic B is looking for random wall samples. I've got something that might help him out. It's a little Visual Basic script that I wrote. Here's the code for it. All you have to do is type these lines into a notepad document and save it as so, you know something like randomwall.vbs. Uh, randomized timer just randomizes the random number generator. Uh, the variable w I have here uh, is just a two-letter array of uh, wall codes basically. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, m is the maximum number of codes that are in here which you get by dividing the length of this variable by two. Um, and then it's just a loop that goes over and over again and what it does is uh, O2 which stands for output 2 um, variable R goes from row 1 through row 5 because his wall is 5 rows high uh, variable C goes 1 through 9 because that's how wide he said his wall was and what it does is it picks a random code out of this uh, string of letters here and it adds the letter code at that position uh, to the output string here. And then after it does one whole row, it adds that output string to the main output string and it starts over for the next row. So once it has all five rows, it'll output it. And what it ends up doing is looking like this. and it will generate a random set of codes up here. And using those codes, you can go into Minecraft. Let's go ahead and make it where we can see part of this. And you can build yourself a wall segment. So for example, the codes are MB for mossy block, SB for stone brick, uh, dashes indicate a gap, stone brick, SD for slab down, gap, stone, stone brick, and cracked brick. And we're going to have another one of these pillars. And using this program you can generate completely random wall segments each time in fairly quick time. I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. Mossy, Mossy. Now these are completely random uh, and I've gone ahead and added gray wool in here because I think it adds a sort of an interesting contrast to the wall. But if you don't like it you can take that out or replace it with a different code like uh, ST for stone. Let's see where was I? Stone stair type three. Now this one takes a little bit of explaining, and I built a model over here to explain the codes. Uh, ST for stone, SB stone brick, MB mossy brick, cracked brick, GW gray wool, slab up, slab down, dashes for an empty space. Here's the stair codes: S and a number one to eight. And they represent the eight different positions a stair can be placed. Uh, position one is an L like that. Position two is like that. Three like that. Four is actually like this, but because it's placed next to five, it's showing that wrap. That's okay because it makes the wall look more random. But just so you know, S4 is like that. Uh, S5 is a regular stair placement, like you're going to go up the stairs. S6 is upside down. And 7 and 8 are the same thing, but on the back side of the wall. So that's how I came up with this. So for the next thing here after gray wool, we've got S3, which is like this. Uh, stone brick. And what I did is I made a little cheat sheet on paper that drew the pictures of the stair placements. That's how I'm doing this so fast. Um, S4, like so. St 
stone, mossy. Next row, cracked brick, uh, S8, which is the upside down stair, like so from the back side. Sorry about the mouse clicking, my keyboard's kind of noisy. Um, stone, S2, which is actually facing here, what comes after S2, stone, good. Because I need that to place that uh, stone. And then S4, which is like down. Stone. S6, which is up. And slab down. And we do the next row. Slab up. Oops. Gap. Stairway 7, which is a regular stair backwards. Uh, S3. You can see how this... Oh, and notice that makes that wraparound stair right there that I was talking about earlier. Uh, cracked brick. Mossy brick. Slam down. Stone brick and crack brick. And if you screw one of these up, don't lose sleep over it. If you're, it looked like Generic was making quite a long wall. So if uh, I was him and I messed one of these up and put the wrong brick in by mistake, it's random. So don't worry about it. This just lets you do a, a truly random looking wall in a very quick manner. Uh, let's go with stone brick here. Gray wool. Slab down. Uh, S7, which is the backward stairs again. And crack brick. And then we add iron bars along the top. And what I've been doing is I just put them where they, oops, where they appear like they might naturally go. Like you might want to leave that or might take it off. It's your call there. And you end up with something like that. And I've run random codes for these other walls here. Uh, one of the ones that I wanted to point out was this one. And this one. It actually made a random hole that you could walk through. Now, if you didn't like that... Um, if, if security is really important, you can just throw like a, a temporary wall or something in there. You know, either that or maybe the, the iron bars. See how the iron bars look in there. Yeah. They're not connecting because these are stairs, of course, but you get the idea. Or, heck, you could even just plug in a block of your choice. If security is important. I kind of like the look of the total randomness, though. And from a distance, this looks like a totally dilapidated wall. Uh, one other thing I would do personally is, in addition to a random, like, land border, I would throw a couple of these vines on here just to give it that overgrown appearance and let them just grow down naturally. You may want to be careful about where you place them. I don't know how good zombies are at accidentally tracking you and bumping into a vine and climbing up it, but oh well. I hope you found this program useful. Um, and it will loop itself over and over again. Every time you finish a wall segment, you can click it and place it like that. If you size your windows the way I did here, you can just read off the codes and build it really quick. And every time you need a new wall segment, you just click OK and you get a new completely random wall segment. And when you're done, just hit Cancel. Uh, here's that code again. Uh, there's nothing malicious here. If you're not sure of that, you can scan it with a virus scanner after you type it in. But just ask a programmer. Like, I think Ethos a good programmer. He'd probably be able to tell you this is safe. I hope you find this program useful. 
Uh, you can customize it. I should show you that real quick. Like, I have all the codes basically appearing in here. And then I thought stone bricks, each one of these is a unique code except for in between these stairs. And what I did is I went ahead and added in an extra stone brick code, like so. And then I added a couple of mossies, but not as many as a stone, and then one extra cracked brick. So if you want a block to appear more frequently, you can just add it a few times anywhere in the string. It doesn't really matter where you add it. At the end is fine. Like I'm going to add four stone bricks. Now the regular stone brick appears more often than anything else. Uh, you want a few extra mossies. There's there. That'll appear almost, you know, more than the stairs would maybe, but not as much as the regular stone brick. And so on. And then if you don't like the gray wool, you can either delete it and just leave it like that or replace it with something else if you want to, you know, make something else more frequent. That's it. Well, that's all I have time for tonight. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing what you can do with it. I hope you build yourself a totally awesome looking wall. This has been CD Arena. Bye bye.